Yo, what is up guys? Kevin here. In this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about snowboard boots, uh, some of the biggest mistakes to avoid, and what I do when I'm looking for a new pair of snowboard boots. So I'm coming to you guys live. If you guys have any questions about snowboard boots, I'll answer them after I kind of give you guys my little um, spiel, my advice. Um, so yeah, let me uh, know about your questions afterwards. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a, a video about snowboard boots. I've already made a video recently talking about uh, my, my favorite snowboards um, and then also a video about my favorite bindings. And this video is uh, gonna be slightly different. It's, uh, this is my favorite pair of boots, the Adidas Sambas, but I'm also gonna talk about uh, just things that I look for uh, and what, what, I have, what I avoid as well. So uh, just, just a, in general, I think the biggest problem that you know, snowboarders have when buying a new pair of boots is getting a pair that gives them like foot pain, discomfort, I think that's like probably the, the biggest problem in snowboarding, to be honest, is foot pain with uh, snowboard boots. So hopefully I can help you guys avoid that. Um, also, just getting a pair of snowboard boots that are like the wrong size. Um, so hopefully try to clear up some of those questions. Um, and then from there, some of the technical stuff that goes into boots, there's, uh, it can be a little bit confusing. So hopefully I can just clear up some of that as well. So over the years, I've probably owned 20 plus pairs of snowboard boots. And to be honest with you guys, probably half of those pairs of boots were not very good for me. Either gave me foot pain, um, were the wrong size, or they just had tech in them that really just made my day of snowboarding not very fun. Um, so those ones I'm gonna go through and hopefully you guys can avoid making those mistakes that I made. Uh, but the other half of the time, the other 10 pairs of the 20, I actually got some really good pairs of boots. And so I wanna try to highlight what made those boots good and how I came across those. Um, and so just to start off, one of the things that I did recently was I started asking friends and getting advice from some of the people that I snowboard with, asking them like what experiences they've had and what boots they recommend. And it was pretty cool. Once I started talking to people, then I started to get feedback um, and advice on, on some of the same boots kept coming up over and over again. And that helped steer me towards some good snowboard boots as well. So the first thing I think you should look for is a comfortable pair of boots. And it sounds easy, comfortable, but I think what you need to do to find a comfortable pair of boots and what I do is I'll go into a snowboard shop and I'll actually try a pair of boots on and I'll keep them on my feet for like 20 or 30 minutes walking around the store and making sure that there's not any like um, spots, like hot spots in the boots that are giving me foot pain. And in the past, I've actually, you know, I've had some foot pain in the store with the boots on and sometimes I would think to myself, oh, this is normal. Um, the boots are gonna break in after a week and, and they'll be fine. And honestly, most of the time, the boots don't get better. They don't get more comfortable. And that same foot pain that you have in the store like stays with you for like 20, 30 days of snowboarding. So I would say the first thing to do is try boots on, walk around in the store, and make sure that you have your feet in a very comfortable pair of boots. So for me, uh, I tried these ones on, the Adidas Sambas. Uh, immediately, just they felt comfortable. I was walking around the store. They were comfortable on my feet. And then I actually was on my way to a snowboard trip. So I took them uh, with me snowboarding, and I rode them the next day. And that like comfortable feeling just continued for the rest of the time on the snowboard trip. So... That was like, um, and I've actually had a few experiences like that now. Uh, so with these, the Adidas Sambas, and a few boots I had to go as well, the, um, the Vans High Standard Pros had the same experience. I tried them on the store, they're comfortable, and then I took them straight out to a snowboard trip and continued riding them and had no foot pain. And uh, the funny thing with the, the Vans was I actually had them was had them on my feet snowboarding all day, no foot pain, and then we went grocery shopping, and then we went out for dinner and drove home, and the whole time my feet just felt good. So that's a, I think that's a big thing, a big misconception maybe in snowboarding is that in the store they need to have, your feet need to be in pain, 
but uh, they shouldn't. The whole, your foot should feel good. Um, another thing related to foot pain and also related to, I guess, like getting the right size is to make sure that you're trying on boots that really fit your feet well. And a mistake that I've made in the past is actually trying to get boots that were too small for me. Um, this was like, I think this is maybe a misconception of snowboarding too, where you really need to like get your foot into the smallest pair of boots that is possible. Um, but the, I think the way that they make snowboard boots now is that the boots aren't really designed to like really pack out that much and like they're not going to really grow much on your feet. Uh, maybe five or 10 years ago in snowboarding, that was the case. But I think nowadays the size of of, for me, my shoe size is the same as my snowboard boot size. So I wear a size 10 shoe, I wear a size 10 snowboard boot, and recently I've still tried to squeeze into like a nine and a half snowboard boot, um, or even a nine, and when I've done that, it's, uh, it's always ended badly for me with just foot pain, my toes getting cramped towards the end of the boot, and just yeah, giving you that foot pain because you don't have the right size. So for me, the size 10 shoe I wear size is the same size as my snowboard boot. And that might not be the exact same across all brands, but for me, like uh, the two brands that I've, have stood it for me that that's worked for has been the Adidas and the Vans size 10 shoe, size 10 boot, it's been fine. Um, yeah, one thing I guess where the theory of like getting a smaller boot size is that you don't want your heel lifting up as you're snowboarding. But I think with the way that snowboard boots are made nowadays, they're really made, designed well to keep your heel down into the boot. So that's just something to consider is, is the size of the boot. Um, and then the th I think another thing, so the, the third, I guess, tip along the same vein is like foot pain is to get a snowboard boot that is going to be like um, I guess the right stiffness. So snowboard boots, they generally range from soft, very soft boots for like park riding to ultra stiff boots for like carving and big mountain riding. And I feel like for 90% of snowboarders out there, you could definitely go for a softer snowboard boot. Um, I know some people, they like stiff snowboard boots for, for racing, for going fast, for um, like just charging through the powder. But I think stiff boots also bring you some foot pain as well because the stiffer the snowboard boot, the more constricted your foot is gonna be inside that boot. So if, if you got your foot locked in there in a stiff boot, then I think that can bring some foot pain as well. And for me, like three, my three most comfortable pairs of snowboard boots have all been on the softer side of medium. So around a four or five on the softness scale. And that might not be ideal if you're like a snowboard racer or if you, you're hitting like tackling giant mountains. But for me, it's like I can have a softer snowboard boot, have it be comfortable on my foot, and then uh, maybe have like a stiffer pair of snowboard bindings to give me some stability and support. So I think there's a trade-off there. I know some people want stiff boots, but I think for comfort-wise and for most snowboarders out there, you could probably go for a softer, a softer boot. Um, the next thing I think, uh, so these are getting into some problems that I've had uh, that um, I've been managed to run into and then maybe avoid with some later pairs is with just the, the lacing system of the boot. So for me, all my favorite pair pairs of snowboard boots have all had just the traditional laces. And for me, traditional laces, is just so simple. You tie your boots up, you can make them as tight as you want with the laces. And it's just like that snug, comfortable feel. And this, for me, generally, like I just do the, a regular like um, bow and that stays tight and intact the, the entire day. And I think with snowboard boots as well is that they're making the laces um, in a way too that they, tighten uh, easier. They're like uh, less abrasive on your fingers so you're not getting your fingers torn up. And uh, yeah, they just hold throughout the day. So for me, the traditional laces, um, the three pairs that have always stuck out for me have been traditional and they've worked totally fine. And then if you do break a lace, if you're up snowboarding, maybe you've paid like $200 for a ticket or you're out on a snowboard trip 
or maybe on the top of a mountain. And if you break a lace, like it's not the end of the world. You can either, sometimes you can like unravel it and then put the lace back through so that you can get through the day with that same lace, or it's very easy to go into any snowboard shop and just grab um, a lace. So for me, snowboard, the traditional laces have definitely been the best. Um, experiences I've had with the BOA system. I know a lot of people out there have uh, BOAs, which is awesome. I know it's like probably the most popular thing on snowboard boots at the moment, but um, I've had a couple pairs of uh, BOA uh, snowboard boots. So that's where they have the dial and then you have like a metal wire uh, tightening down on your foot. Uh, so for me, like that system with, with the dial and the metal wire, a couple things happened. Um, one is that I did notice that throughout the day, the, the BOA system and the wire actually does start to come loose a little bit. So you feel like your, your, your foot's not as snug in the boot as it was at the beginning. And it becomes loose in the places that you need your snowboard's boots to be tight. So for me with the BOA system, it would become loose right at the top, right where my shin meets my snowboard boot. Um, this was across two different pairs. So the, the BOA would get really loose right near the top. And then as I would start to twist that dial to get my boots tight again, it would really get tight in different places, maybe like down um, across like the crease of my like ankle down here or just in an area. So some parts of my boot would get really tight and then another part like right near the top of my shin would be very loose. So I would be snowboarding with this mixture of extremely tight with um, loose pockets in my boot. So the BOA wasn't uh, the best for me. It gave me foot pain and performance wise, it didn't really hold up. Uh, the other problem I had with Bo the BOA system is I noticed that only after four or five days that some of the, um, because the BOA is kind of like um, threaded through the boot and it was actually starting to pull some of the boot apart um, in areas where it was like stitched in. Uh, because you're using like the, the metal wire and it's getting so tight and then it starts to, to pull apart some of the stitching. So that was some of the issues I've had with uh, the BOA system. Um, also, with uh, there's another system out there called Speed Zone. So Speed Zone laces. So instead of a lace, you have, um, it's kind of like, uh, not a metal wire, but like a, um, a durable fabric wire that, that goes through. Um, and then you just like pull, you just pull, uh, pull the speed zone lace from the top and it pulls up everything and tightens your boot. And I actually rode the, that style of lace for years. And the problem that I kept running into with that style is that if one of those speed zone uh, laces would break, which it would maybe once or twice a season, then you gotta go through the headache of taking it into a snowboard shop to get it fixed. Um, and sometimes if it broke in the wrong way, they wouldn't be able to fix it and then you'd have to go through the process of sending the boots back for warranty um, or just you know riding with one broken lace so all that headache just to sa save some time of uh, not having to just do up the laces the tradition the traditional way um, the yeah and one story i had with the speed zone laces is i was on a hike i was um you know miles from my car up in the mountains hiking and i went to tighten my boots and uh they broke and it got locked in the tight position. So my boot was like as tight as it could be and the, uh, the, the lace broke. So I was kind of like trapped inside my boot. I couldn't get my foot in, out of it. Um, and I know that's just like one story, uh, just one story from like one person, but for me, it's not worth it to uh, save some extra time with that speed zone when I could just do traditional laces and they work perfectly fine. Um, so that's a few things about the boots. So yeah, a quick recap. So yeah, trying them on, making sure they're comfortable in the store, keeping, keeping them on your feet, um, getting the right size. For me, I just go like my shoe size is my snowboard boot size. Um, I'm a big fan of the traditional laces. And then also, yeah, for I think for most riders, you could get away with like a softer, a medium to softer style boot. Um, comfort, I think is number one, because if you're, feet are aching up there, then it really ruins your snowboard experience. And, you know, performance is important too. So getting a, a boot that has some of those features, like, you know, um, for
For example, with this boot, something I look for too is having like a decent tread on the bottom. If I'm doing some hiking, I wanna make sure that there's some, some decent tread so that I'm not slipping out on the ice. Um, waterproofing, I actually had a pair of boots um, a few years ago that the material on the toe was actually like a soft material and the, the water and the snow just like soaked right into it. And I think the idea was that it was made of recycled um, materials, which is a, a nice uh, thought, but it, my feet got wet every time I went boarding. So some good durable materials around your toe to keep your feet dry. And also like insoles are pretty different across all different boots. And I know some people have different shaped feet. Some people have a higher arch, uh, but that's where putting your foot into it, making sure it's comfortable. And then if you do need to put a special insole into your boot, I know that they sell those a lot of times at, at a snowboard shop. So you can try it with a, a special insole if you have like a, a high arch or something like that. So yeah, that was that's my thoughts on boots, guys. I hope that that helps you out. Um, I can see that there's a bunch of people talking in the live chat so we can answer a few questions about boots. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any, if you guys are watching this back and if you have any questions, leave them for me down in the comments and I'll watch them. Um, I'll also put a link to these boots, the Adidas Sambas down in the description if you wanna check them out. And uh, yeah, if you guys wanna see more videos like this, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. But yeah, thanks for listening to my two cents guys. Let's uh, check out some of the questions in the live chat. All right. All right, so Ryan asks, what are your, uh, what's your opi opinion on Burton boots, specifically step-ons? Is the Ion really worth it? Um, so I think with the step-on boots, so you have to, with the Burton step-on bindings, you have to get the step-on boots. And for me, it's, I understand that some people, the priority of being able to quickly get in and out of your bindings is important. So I think if that's the number one issue, like your number one on your priority list is being able to get quickly in and out of your, out of your bindings, then that could be the way to go. But for me, I would prefer to get um, a boot and binding setup that's more geared towards performance. And that's with like um, just the traditional bindings with the straps. And then that also gives you more options for your snowboard boots too, because if you get the step-ons, then you have to get those few pairs of Burton boots. Whereas if you go for the traditional bindings with the straps, then you're open to, to getting like any boots you want to. So I think that's a, a bit of a better way to go. All right, so yeah, Jake says thoughts on the double boas. So the double boa system, um, if you guys don't know, so there's two systems, I guess it's like single boa and double. I think there's another one too, but so there's a upper section with the boa and the wire to tighten the upper section. And then there's a lower section that you can tighten separately, which is, uh, which is better being able to tighten the lower and uh, upper separate. But for me, I still, I had that problem with uh, certain areas of the boot becoming more tight and others being loose and not really being able to overcome that hurdle. Uh, and then on top of that with the discomfort and everything. So the double boa still didn't work for me. Um, and then I know that there's also single boa. So the single boa, it just tightens everything together. And I think that like just makes the problem even worse of not being able to tighten your boot where you need to. Um, and I think the lace, the laces kind of solve, solve that problem. You can just tighten the boots exactly how you want them to be tightened with, with tr traditional laces. Um, all right. And then naps, uh, says, can you, um, boot fit? Okay. Sorry. Oh, where'd it go? Okay, so Nap says, can can the boots itself be heat molded for like the toe box area issues? Uh, yeah, definitely. So if you're trying on a, a pair of boots and you have some like, I would say like if you have some small um, areas of the boot that don't feel like they f are fitting perfectly, then you can heat mold them which I think does help with uh, some of those issues. It just, uh, so in the store, they'll put the boot onto the, 
the heater, uh, this device that uh, heats up the boots. And then in the store, you put them on your feet and then you keep them on your feet for 20 or 30 minutes and they help to mold the inside of the boot to your foot. Um, I would say that that is, that's an okay thing to do, um, but I wouldn't try to like solve any pain or bigger issues by heat molding. I don't think, like for me in the past when I've had some pressure points or if I've had some discomfort in the boots and I've tried to like heat mold them, put them on my feet and try to solve the, the problem that way, it's never worked. Um, I've actually, you know, I had a pair of boots a, a few few years ago and I actually had a friend who worked in a boot shop, um, Andreas, some of you guys know him from the channel, and he took him into his, his snowboard shop, was heat molding them, putting them on his feet, and even with him working in a snowboard shop and doing that over and over, um, he couldn't solve that, like, those pressure point pain uh, pains. So uh, I think heat molding can do a, a little bit for the snowboard boots, but, but not a ton. All right, lots of questions coming through. Thanks, guys. Oh, we got 370 people watching. Amazing. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Uh, 77 likes. Yeah, really, really appreciate the support, guys. All right. Uh, so Luke the Moose 99 wants to know what is my overall favorite boot. Um, so yeah, over the years I've uh, I've had three like three favorites. Um, maybe ten plus years ago there was a Burton boot. I think it was um, the Jeremy Jones uh, model of Burton boot, and it was like very it was very similar to this one. So it was just like a basic. It was a pretty basic boot, um, traditional laces. Uh, softer and like not to be honest like it not nothing fancy it was just like a basic model boot so um, that boot a ten, about 10 years ago that was my favorite at the time and I think it was just, uh, just called the Burton Jeremy Jones and it was yeah it was awesome comfortable and even the sole was a bit thinner it wasn't super thick and beefy boot and I noticed that um, before that I rode the Burton Ions and then I changed to the Burton Jeremy Jones and that like thinner sole actually allowed me to feel more of what was happening underneath my, underneath my board. So that was an awesome feeling. So even with, um, you know, you think you're buying a boot that's like ultra cushiony with like tons of tech and sometimes it takes away the feel of the ride. Um, so that was my favorite boot about 10 years ago. Um, then about three years ago, I had the Vans High Standard Pro Boots, and those were amazing, comfortable, on the softer side, traditional laces. Um, so those are my favorite. Uh, but recently, the last, like, I guess eight months now, I've been riding these Adidas Sambas, and these have just been incredible. Um, just tick all the boxes for me. Good performance. They're mid-flex laces. Uh, keep my feet dry. Um, yeah, just everything. So the Adidas Sambas, I think, have been really good. And they're not that, uh, I'm actually, I can't remember how much I paid for them. Um, I bought them in a store in uh, Washington, uh, in Seattle, Washington, in the Evo store. So I bought them in there and, yeah, took them to the mountains, to Stevens Pass, Washington, wore them for a week, and, uh, yeah, just haven't had any issues with them since. So these have been, these are my all-time favorite for sure. And the cool thing with these boots is that a lot of my friends ride them as well. So it's not just like me thinking I've, I've found great boots. A lot of my friends uh, ride the Adidas as well. So um, if you've seen some of my videos recently when I was in Europe, all of my uh, buddies were, were riding these boots and we didn't plan on it, uh, just, just kind of happened. Uh, Steven Mendoza with the super chat. Awesome. Thanks for the support. Uh, uh, Stefan says probably answered 1000 times, but why the preference of laces versus boa system? Um, yeah. Awesome. Stefan. Um, so yeah, with the, so first of all, with the laces to me, it's just easy. So you can just, in you know, less than, you know, 30 seconds, you can tie up your boots really tight just make a simple bow at the top and then you're set for the day. Like they stay tight, they're comfortable. If uh, they do break, it's super easy to replace. Obviously there's, there's, uh, there's laces for boots everywhere. 
And uh, so that's why I like laces versus the BOA system, which has the dials on the side and the front with the, the metal um, wires going through. With the BOAs, I find that you can get them tight in the morning, but then as you ride them, you start to feel areas of the boot that gets loose. And for me, the area of the boot that would get loose with the BOAs would be right at the top, right near my shin. And if I would then try to tighten the boot, it wouldn't tighten it where I needed it to be at the top. It would start to tighten it maybe down lower somewhere and kind of put like give me an awkward pressure point. So I would be snowboarding with lots of like um, a loose feeling up at the top and really tight in other places. And I've talked to people who have had this like same experience of you just have less control of where the boot's gonna be tight with the bows. Um, on top of that, the bows I had, I, I did see them start to like tear. So they, it was starting to tear away from the boot. Um, and also comfort wise, I feel like the bows, I think obviously they're gonna be less comfortable because instead of laces, tightening your boot, you've got this like metal wire starting to, to tighten down onto your foot. So for me, it was, I, I've tried bows a few times, every time I had the same issues. So that's why traditional laces, they're cheaper, they're easier, they're easier to fix. So that's why I go with those. Uh, Luke the Moose saying, yeah, Stevens is the best. Uh, for sure, man. Yeah, I had a blast at Stevens Pass in Washington. Such a cool resort. Oh, man, over 400 people watching, too. Thank you guys for, thanks for everyone for hopping on. Oh, no, Jonathan saying, I got Bose uh, as my first, and now I kind of regret it for that exact reason. Oh, no way, Jonathan. Oh, sorry to hear that, man. Uh, Lawrence saying... Thanks for the support, Lawrence. Says, thanks so much for sharing your experience. Have you tried the dual BOA system, which can solve the unevenness or tightness across the feet? Um, yeah, Lawrence, I had I had the double BOAs, and yeah, I still I just still had the same problem. So the the upper section was always the issue for me. Uh, trying to uh, adjust the dial, get getting it tight, and Honestly, like um, it was two different pair of boots that I, where I had the double bows and the feeling that I would have is this part of my foot was like locked in place, like so tight, just locked in, like I couldn't move it. And then at the top where my, the boot was meeting the, the front of my leg, like my shin, I just had so much room. I'd be like, I'd be going to make a toe turn and then I would feel my shin like hit the front of the boot. And then it would, as I would do, get onto my heels, it would like lift away. And so I'd have all this tightness down here and then with like tons of play at the top. So that's where even with the double boa system, it didn't work out. Um, and then, yeah, on top of that, just the, the discomfort of, of wearing them as well. Uh, Dragon's Rain saying, I'm, I'm interviewing for a position selling and fitting snowboard setups. Any tips, both in general and for commercial fitting instead of personal. Oh, wow. So Dragon's Rain says, I'm interviewing for a position selling and fitting snowboard setups. Any tips? Um, yeah, that's uh, it's it's tough because I don't know the shop that you're going to. Every shop's a little bit different. So I would say what you need is what you need. What you need to do is maybe like know the shop a little bit before you go in, like what they're looking for. Um, but also like, um, you know, a big part, I think, of, of being in snowboard sales is having your own experience. So the personal part, I think, comes into it. Uh, but then also asking good questions when people come in. So, um, you know, somebody comes in to buy a snowboard. And like, I think everyone's different a little bit. So asking them really good questions so that you can then guide them towards the right setup. Um, yeah, I think that's like, you don't need, I think on the job, they'll, they do a lot of training with like gear. So I don't think they expect you to know everything about all the products, but being able to ask people good questions to make sure that you get the information you need so that you can guide them towards the right products. Um, and then sometimes people don't know what they want and that's when you have to kind of, um, yeah, get the, get the feel for it yourself. But um, yeah, Dragon Rain, good luck with your job interview, man. I hope you get it. Uh, what snowboard shops are you, are you going towards? Maybe we, we can uh, come, come visit you at some point, man. 
All right, so. Wow, big shout out. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. This is one of the biggest uh, live chats I've ever done. So maybe, maybe I'll have to do some more late night live chats. This is the, the prime time. Uh, so off uh, another question, not about boots, but close. Uh, just got a Capita DOA. You think the union force bindings would be a good choice with them? That's from Dylan10B. Um, yeah, man, that's an awesome setup. Capita DOA, a bit of a mid, a bit stiffer than mid flex. And then same with the union force, a bit of a more aggressive binding. And I actually really like the union forces this year because they have like an updated uh, ankle strap, like a much more like 3D molded uh, ankle strap. So that's a, a really good binding for it. All right. Oh, wow. We got another super chat. Uh, Lawrence, thanks man for the support. It says one more question. I used to own a normal laced system a long time ago, but I don't feel that I can stay uh, tight as I ride. I moved to Boas. Does the Samba boots really stay tight? Thanks again. Um, yeah, man, for sure. Honestly, like if I get these properly tight, like first thing in the mor uh, morning, um, I don't touch them the rest of the day. And yeah, every, to be honest, like I never, um, I'm finding myself like pulling over to relace them. I don't think I've ever relaced these boots, to be honest with you. Uh, once I get them tight in the morning, then, then they're done. Um, that may be because of just the style of laces they have. They may just be good at staying tight. I don't know, but yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is my, I, yeah, I find myself never having to retighten. They're always good from the start to the finish. Um, that actually reminded me, I don't know what, it, why, but there was another pair of boots, uh, a fourth pair that's coming to mind that had their traditional laces that were really comfortable as well. And those are the 32 lashed boots. So I believe that there is a 32 lashed with the BOA system, but a few years ago I had the 32 lashed with the traditional laces and they were awesome as well. Just really comfortable and like a good, good solid boot and inexpensive too. But yeah, uh, don't have to tighten them up through the day. Uh, Josh saying, Kevin, have you ever heard of brushing the base of your board? Oh, sorry, I lost your question. Brushing the base of your board after scraping. If not, you gotta try it, man. Makes a big difference. Uh, Josh, yeah, for sure. Actually, so, a couple of videos ago, I know I showed myself. Um, so I did a video waxing my board and then the next video before going riding, I scraped the wax off. Uh, but yeah, I didn't show you guys. I, I did uh, brush it as well. Um, it wasn't with like an actual brush, but it was with like, it was with a, um, like one of those green, um, like kind of like uh, dish dishwashing pads. And I just like rubbed that um, down from tip to tail down the base of the board. Uh, so yeah, giving it that kind of brushed and polished look. Uh, so yeah, I did do that the last time. I just didn't put it in the video, but that's a, a really good thing to do as well. Um, the brush isn't, I'd, I'd show you the thing I use, but it's not within arm's reach. But yeah, that's a really awesome thing to do as well. Just give it a, a good brush with um, uh, a dishwashing pad, or I think you can get them if they come in like a, a waxing kit. Uh, Lawrence with another super chat as well. Awesome. Thanks Lawrence for the support. What is SGD? What currency is that? I don't even know what's an SGD. Uh, Matthew saying, usually your shoe size is your boot size, but try a pair on to see if they fit. Yeah, that can be a good idea. Like if you... Because even in shoes, like even when you're trying on shoes, some shoes like fit a little bit differently um, than boots. Excuse me, guys. But from my experience is like my shoe size has been my boot size for years now. And um, yeah, especially even for me, like I ride Adidas shoes as well. So the I have size 10 shoes and go right into a size 10 snowboard boot. 
Oh, somebody somebody got banned. Peter B. Sorry, got banned, man, for spamming. Thanks for thanks to our moderators, Bad Riders, and Red's Cap for uh, helping to keep the chat clean. Uh, Mega Crash says good morning from Barcelona, Kevin. What's up, Mega Crash? Thanks for watching. Uh, Nicholas wants to know, what is your go-to do-it-all binding? Uh, so my do-it-all binding this year, uh, this is within arm's reach, is the uh, the Union Stratus. So it's like a mid-flex binding, uh, comfortable uh, heel and toe, uh, ankle and toe strap. Um, yeah, and just a com comfortable, kind of do-everything kind of binding. I Yeah, I could ride this in the park or take it into the powder. It kind of falls like right in the middle stiffness wise. So yeah, this year the, the Union Strat is I'll probably be riding most often. All right, let's do, uh, let's do a few more questions. If you guys have any boot questions. Um, uh, Pootsik says, thoughts on Vans High Standard Pro boots? Um, yeah, those are one of my favorites, uh, probably you know, if uh, in my top four of all time for sure, and they're they got the traditional laces, so that you got that covered. Um, they're a bit softer, so if you like soft boots, if you're park rider or if you're like a beginner intermediate rider, um, they are a softer boot, but that's uh, that helps to make them comfortable and, and good for the park. Um, and and yeah, they're like coming at an inexpensive price too. I think they are, you know, around two hundred American or maybe around that price so they come in at a pretty decent price too for snowboard boots so yeah i'm a big fan of the van high standard pros one of my favorites uh, <laughs> uh living living yo says uh what about people where uh your toes are longer than your big toe uh interesting that's when like something like a heat mold may help you because yeah, like everyone's feet, you know, some people have little different things about their feet and maybe a, a heat mold will, will help with that. Uh, Bad Rider says, so many step on questions. Might be time to do another video uh, explaining why you don't like them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we may have to do another video about step-ons. Yeah, lots of people love the uh, the step-on bindings. I actually, I I rode them, it's been maybe two years since I rode, rode step-ons, so I, I think it's time to give them another shot. And Stefan Mendoza with the super chat, thanks for the support, says, looking to graduate to my first positive camber board. Uh, been on an Arbor rocker. Uh, what would you recommend? Awesome, Stefan. Positive camber board. Yeah, uh, man, it kind of depends, uh, Stefan, like what kind of riding you want to do. Um, if you're into uh, the park, maybe check out something, you know, recently I've been on a few capital snowboards that have been really fun. Um, yeah, it depends if you want to do park, Stefan, or all mountain or powder. Um, an all mountain board that is, um, camber, uh, you can check out the DOA, Capita DOA or Super DOA. I think that's like a good sort of resort board, kind of do everything. It's a, it's a camber dominant board that's flat to rocker towards the tips. So it's like not overly aggressive. And then if you wanted to get a positive camber board that was a bit softer for the park, you could check out something like the Capita Ultra Fear. Um, that one, or is that camber or flat? I can't remember. Um, but maybe something like the, the LibTech uh, box knife. I have a friend who rides that and loves it in the park. Or the uh, a Nitro uh, T1, another camber board. But um, yeah, man, there's there's lots out there. It just kind of de kind of depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, Kurt Gray with the Super Chat says, what do you think about the Flow uh, Merc? board rome slice bindings and dc phase boots uh nice man let me uh kurt let me look up those dc phase boots let me just see if if they if they meet my criteria all right quick uh google search 
Oh, nice, man. Yeah, they got the uh, DC phase. They've got the traditional... Come on. Traditional laces. I like it, man. They look uh, they look pretty solid. They got some good, good style happening. They're like right in the middle flex-wise. Yeah, dude, those, uh, those look nice. I think... Uh, I tried those on. I tried those boots on for sure. DC phase. Yeah, maybe next time next time I'm in, I'm in a shop that's got DC boots, I'll, I'll try on a pair of the, the DC phase. Nice, man. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go for a few more. Oh, my battery is going to die. What's happening with that? All right. So Emily again, thoughts on the step ons. So step on step on boot and binding combo, that can be a good that can be a good thing if your priority when snowboarding is the convenience of getting in and out of the of your board quickly. Um, I think there's some uh, trade-offs. Like I don't think they're as good for performance, the step ons. And I also think it limits your choice choices of boots that will go with the step ons. So yeah, there's a couple, there's a couple drawbacks, but if the convenience of getting in and out is your number one thing, then, then maybe that's the one for you. All right. Um, Nick wants to know if I'll ever come to Michigan. Yeah, maybe at, at some point. Love visiting the States, so hopefully get down to Michigan soon. Joel says, best board to replace the GNU space case. Um, nice, Joel. Yeah, a board to replace the GNU space case. I don't know, maybe try the, maybe try the headspace. For me, that was my next board after the space case, and I... I was glad I moved up to the headspace. It was just um, a little bit a, a little bit more stable with speed, the headspace. Maybe check that one out. Uh, Santa wants to know, how often should you replace your boots? Uh, yeah, good good uh, question, Santa. I think that you you want to replace your boots when you feel like you're not getting the support from your boots that you were getting at the start. Um, so for me, I've had, I've had these boots now for eight months. Um, hasn't been snowboarding straight the whole time. So there's been a few months where I, I wasn't riding them. But yeah, I could probably, I'll probably ride these for another month or two at least. But if I start to feel like the boots are becoming too soft, um, like they don't have the support, or, or when you start to feel like you're getting like your heel starts to lift um, out of your boot a little bit, it just means that they've been worked in too much and it's time to replace them. So I think it's a, a feeling thing. Once you feel like your boots have gone past their their like uh, expiration date, then uh, then that's when you, you want to get a new pair. But for me, these ones still feel solid. They still feel they still feel good six six to eight months later. Um, but yeah, once they start to feel like they're getting mushy and like you don't have that ankle support. Uh, that's when it's time to go for a new pair. All right, awesome. Uh, Andrew says, hi, Kevin. Uh, these Adidas boots look promising. Have you also tried tactical ADV and compared with the Sambas? Thanks. Um, I haven't. No, I haven't tried them yet, but... Um, yeah, there's a shop here in Whistler called The Circle, and I'm um, pretty stoked to go in there. They've, I know they've got a line of Adidas, so I'm gonna try to, maybe I'll try the, the AD, ATVs on, uh, is it ATV or ADV? <laughs> I'll try those on when I get into uh, a, a snowboard shop. And Holden wants to know when the Snowboard Pro Camp black beanies will be available again. Uh, soon they're ordered. I think they're made and I think they are on their way on their way to my house. So hopefully I get some black beanies in soon for you guys and can start uh, yeah, getting the, the beanies up for sale again.
Um, Will says, uh, what's the deal with ankle lean on boots? I noticed some boots like the K2 Thraxis are super angled forward. Do you notice this when trying boots on? Um, that's an interesting point. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that goes back to like, um, comfort and yeah, like, uh, performance versus comfort too, because I know with some boots, like you can get the like very stiff, rigid boots with like a lot of forward lean in them. These ones are, don't have it too much. They're, they're pretty like much on a, like a, a right angle there. So I think for me, that's what my bindings are for. So if I want to have um, increase the amount of angle on the back of my uh, on the back of my leg, on the back of my ankle there, I can just increase that with my bindings, and I don't need the boots to do that for me. So for my like for boots, I want them to be comfortable comfortable for riding, but also just for walking around in too. So I don't want to have any kind of crazy like um, forward angle happening on the back. Um, but yeah, if I need that, I can just get that out of my, out of my snowboard bindings. Uh, Josh says, yo, Kevin, my, my feet keep falling asleep while riding, even loosening the laces. Should I swap for new boots or change something up? Uh, Josh, yeah, sorry to hear that, man. I think it must be the boots. There must be some kind of pressure point happening where it's making your feet fall asleep. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Uh, Josh, maybe let us know what boots you're riding because, um, yeah, we can kind of maybe check them out and see what's going on there. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Call me crazy says any things to consider when lacing boots? Uh, yeah, good question, man. Honestly, for me, like I just do like the straight up, like nothing fancy. I don't do any like double knots or double bows or like extra um, anything. I just do the just straight lace up your your shoes. So yeah, for me, this works. Perfect. It works fine. Get some nice and tight. I know there's some. Uh, there are some ways out there that where you can double up the the bow, or I know some people do an extra like uh, cross um, right at the kind of midpoint there. But for me, just the the regular way you do a, a shoe is is the same for the boots. <laughs> Daniel says, "Yo, my turtle keeps falling asleep while I play Tetris. Any thoughts?" Man, uh, you need to turn up the volume uh, on your gaming console or something. Wake that turtle up. Joel wants to know, does your feet ever hurt when you use a new snowboard? Uh, no, no, never hurts while using a new board. Um, the only time I get some like discomfort and maybe in my legs and feet is when I'm going through like really nasty, like snow. So if the snow conditions are like really say like, um, uh, wet and sticky, then that can cause some like issues. Uh, or if you're just going through just like, uh, this summer I was riding in, uh, in Switzerland and part of the ride down was over a glacier that was just all ice and bumpy. And that gave me some like kind of like leg and, and, and pain all around. So sometimes you can get into some really terrible conditions that may give you some pain, but uh, not normally with the new board. Normally with the new snowboard, it feels like you're gliding and, and it feels good, to be honest. Uh, oh, Bad Riders with an awesome question here too, says, how do you store your boots when you're not using them, Kev? Awesome, Bad Riders. Yeah, thanks for that question, man. Uh, so yeah, if you do store your boots over like the summer or if you're not going to use them for a few months, uh, I recommend first making sure they're totally dry. So I have a boot dryer. Um, I got one on Amazon for maybe like, it was like 50 or $60. Um, so normally I'll come back from snowboarding, put them on a boot dryer to get them totally dry. And then if I'm not going to use them for a month or two, it's a good idea to actually lace your boots up and like tie them up. Uh, and that way the boot like holds its shape um, because 
the materials that the boots are made out of, um, if you just like leave them open, then they'll actually kind of start to lose their shape if you've, if it's a few months. So um, yeah, try to get them completely dry and, and tie them up. And Braden says, uh, my board's a four out of 10. Is that okay for park and terrain? Yeah, four out of 10, that's like, that's perfect, Braden. Yeah, good choice, man. Okay. Chill13 says, what are the cons to going cheap on boots? Uh, to be honest, like for me, like the most, the, the more inexpensive boots have been my favorites. So um, to me, like there's, there's not many cons. Um, yeah, I can't think of any. I think if like you are a high performance, like uh, snowboarding athlete, uh, maybe racing or carving or or um, high level contests, then maybe that comes into play with a more expensive boot. But for me, like the more inexpensive boots, I think have been best for me. And, and just from my experience of riding with other snowboarders and from teaching snowboarding is that most people I think uh, would do do well with more inexpensive boots. Um, just because they have, they're just uh, more basically made um, and a little bit, I think in general, going to be more comfortable on your feet. Um, I think as long as you go for, um, as long as you're not going for some weird snowboard models that maybe like um, don't usually make snowboard boots, if you're going for like a um, some of the more popular snowboard brands, I think the inexpensive uh, models um, make some good boots. Ryan wants to know, are you riding Bear this year? Yeah, I definitely want to come down to Bear, California. Hopefully the, the border opens. Um, all right, cool. So what, uh, what, time, what time do we got here? All right, we'll do uh, one or two more questions, guys. Uh, big shout out. Thanks to everyone who's done a super chat. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't yet, like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, also there's a link to these uh, boots down in the description if you want to check them out as well. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for all the support on this uh, on this live chat. Uh, Boris says, boots with the most swagger. <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess that's, uh, that's, that's up to you. That's, swagger is a personal thing. Yeah, swagger is is very is very important, Chuck Van. Yeah. Uh, KC says Arbor Westmark or Solomon Huckknife for the park. Um, I'd probably go with the Solomon Huckknife. It's a bit softer. Um, I think it's a it feels lighter. Um, yeah, my preference would be the Solomon Huckknife. Uh, Joel wants to know any restrictions in Whistler due to COVID. Um, yeah, there's some restrictions like you have to book um, online ahead of time, like reserve a day. Uh, that's been running fine so far. And then you also have to wear like a face mask in line and on the gondolas. So that's kind of like um, that can be annoying because sometimes you arrive into the line and uh, putting your face mask on. If you're breathing heavy, your goggles get all fogged up. But it's not that big of a deal really just uh, yeah, wearing, wearing a mask and uh, reserving your spot. I think it's actually, it's been running really smooth so far. So it's been good. Um, uh, and Oni says tips for snowboarding in the South ice uh, is hard to learn on. Uh, so yeah, for riding on ice, I would recommend a snowboard that has uh, magnet traction. That really helps with icy conditions. Uh, so the magnet traction, if you don't know, it's like the edge of your snowboard is like serrated, kind of like a bread knife. And that serrated edge uh, just gives you more hold on ice. Um, but yeah, if you don't have a board with magnet traction, for riding ice, you really want to just like, first like look ahead, try to see where the ice is so you can avoid it. Um, but if you can't avoid ice, it's a good idea to like try to like, you don't want to be trying to stop on the ice. You almost want to go with it. So ride across it 
or just like let your edge kind of glide across the ice. Um, because if you try to put on the brakes too much on ice, then you're just going to slide out. So uh, look ahead, try to avoid it. But if you can't, kind of go with it. And also try to keep your weight stacked over top of your board. Because if, if your weight gets too far out over your toes or over your heels, that's when your board can slide out as well. Uh, Liam says, should park boots have a soft flex? Um, yeah, I think like most people like uh, for riding park to have softer boots. Um, it just allows you to, for getting into tricks, you can, it's a bit more versatile having uh, softer boots. But also I think soft boots allow you to make like smaller maneuvers. So if you're you know, going to do a trick and you need to be adjusting the angle of your board just by a little bit, then having softer boots allows you to do that. Where with like stiff boots, um, you know, any little movement you put into a, a stiffer boots really gets exaggerated on your snowboard. So it's harder to make those like small um, adjustments with stiffer boots. So uh, yeah, soft is the way to go. Yeah, shout out to uh, Chuck Van for being a moderator as well. Um, yeah, thanks to all the moderators. Uh, all right. Cool, guys. So going to wrap it up there. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in for this um, yeah snowboard boot live chat. Um, yeah, big shout out. I can't believe how many people tuned in. Over We had over 400 and something people watching at once. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, if you haven't yet, give this video a like. And if you're watching this video as a replay, definitely leave me any of your questions down below in the, uh, in the comment section. But um, yeah, big uh, big shout out! Thank you guys so much. I hope you got hope you're having a good time out there snowboarding, and I will I'll see you guys on here on here again soon. Awesome, later guys.